Hello, geometry students, Mr. Zazik back, and better than ever, we're in Regents Review 6. We're looking at right triangle trigonometry. And uh, so when we think about right triangle trigonometry, we want to think about um, the three different ratios. The tangent of A equals the opposite over adjacent. Um, the sine of A equals the opposite over hypotenuse. And then the cosine of A equals the um, adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we often abbreviate that. One of the sayings we use is Tom's old aunt sat on her cat and hollered. Or uh, some people like Sokotoa is another one. Um, so we need to be familiar with that. And there's a couple things that we can do with trig. We've got basically two options. One is we can find a side of a right triangle and two we can find an angle and when we use the angle we're going to use like the inverse. So to the negative one that is the inverse for it. So in, this is uh, June 2015. The diagram below shows a ramp connecting the ground to the loading platform 4.5 feet above the ground. The ramp measures 11.75 feet from the ground to the top of the loading platform. Determine and state to the nearest degree the angle of elevation formed by the ramp and the ground. So I'm going to call this angle X. And so we need to recognize we have a right triangle. We know, and we're looking for an angle, so this is a trig question. So we start off by, we always identify the hypotenuse first, that's opposite the right angle. The other one that our arc is going to touch is the adjacent, and then opposite the angle would be this last one. So I look at my, my trig functions and I realize that this is, I know the opposite and the hypotenuse, this is a sine question. So it's the sine of x, it's always the sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle. In this case, the angle is unknown, and I'm calling it x, equals 4.5 divided by 11.75. So we need to get x by itself, and the way that we do that is we take the inverse. And the inverse is represented by this sine to the negative 1. So 11.75. All right, and so on our calculator, the 4.5 divided by 11.75, where that comes up for us here is, let me get a, a new document, is the trig button, and we're going to go to the negative 1, of 4.5 divided by 11.75 and we get 22.5. So to the nearest degree, we would round that to uh, 23 degrees. All right, so one type of trig question we should anticipate is having to find the angle, and again, we use the inverse. Another um, question related to trig that we see a lot is related to the sine and cosine of complements. So in this equation, triangle ABC, we have a right triangle, which is always true. So here's what we need to understand. In a triangle, they all add up to 180. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is also going to equal 90. We call those two angles uh, complementary angles. Whenever you have complementary angles, the sine and cosine of those two are going to be equal. I'll show you why here. Well, AB is going to be the hypotenuse, but for A, the opposite side of A is this side over here. However, if we're talking about B, this side CB is not the opposite. This is the adjacent side. And so that's why the sine of A, in this case, would be CB over AB, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine of B, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that would be CB over AB. So anytime two angles add up to 90 degrees, their sine and cosines are going to be equal. 
um, the angles themselves are not equal, it's their sine and cosines. So just to show you, pick one, uh, 45 was got to equal the cosine of what? Well, if you're following wrong, the two angles have to add to be 90, so that would be 50. What do you see? We get the exact same value for that. Okay, so they like, this is an idea, this is a uh, concept that um, they like to ask about, and they kind of ask it in a couple ways. One way is like this, do you know the sine and cosine are equal? The other way is understanding that the two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. All right, one other one that we have here, now this is, we're given an angle and a right triangle. As shown in the diagram below, the angle of elevation from a point on the ground to the top of the tree is 34 degrees. If the point is 20 feet from the base of the tree, what is the height to the nearest tenth of a foot? Well, we can't do Pythagorean theorem because we only know one side. But this is the hypotenuse. X is the opposite. That means 20 is the adjacent. So which one? So I sometimes write, okay, Tom's old aunt sat on her cat and hollered. All right, well, we know the, or we're looking for the opposite. We know the adjacent. This is a tangent question. So the tangent of 34 equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Sometimes I like to write the tangent of 34 over 1. I call this a one-step question because we simply have to do the cross product property. 1 times x equals x, and then it's the tangent of 34 times 20. So when you put the tangent of 34 times 20 into your calculator, that's really the step. So the tangent of 34 times 20 is 13.49 and said nearest tenth of a foot we'd say 13.5 feet. Okay so find a side. The ones that you have to be a little aware of are when the variable is in the denominator and, and then you have to do two steps. You have to use a cross product property and then you need to divide that. Okay last one most uh, kind of complex of them, and this one is going to, uh, I just want to, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I want to review the law of signs. So we're trying to find, in this case here, the height of the flagpole, which we'll call x, okay? And height is always perpendicular um, in this case. The problem that you have is we don't know any of the sides of either of those right triangles. So um, one of the ways to do this, there's multiple ways to do it, but one of the ways to do it is to, we need to find a side of this triangle. Well, what do we know? Well, this angle here, if I do 180 minus 52.8, that would give me 127.2 that has to be this angle because these are a linear pair and if I add that to um, 34.9 and then subtract that from 180 so that's 162.1 this last angle would be 17.9 now if we call this side over here y what we can do is something called the law of sines. And the law of sines says the sine of 127.2, that's a 7, over y equals the sine of 17.9 over 8. And the deal with the law of sines is this angle is opposite that side, and this angle is opposite this side. And so now we can solve that for y. So I don't need a right triangle. This triangle in here is not a right triangle. So if we do our cross product property um, times the sine of 127.2, and then we divide this by the sine of 17.9. So just put this whole thing in your calculator. Whoops, 17.9. And what you want to do is you want to have this times... Um, You just want to put your fraction template in first, okay? 
And so this y value is 20.7324. So 20.7324. Now I can look at that big yellow triangle and I can do just normal sign. I can think of x as the opposite and this number as the hypotenuse. So I could take the sine of 34.9 equals x over 20.7324. And I can do it that way because I have the yellow triangle as a right triangle. But this other triangle, which I'll highlight with a different color, is not a right triangle. So instead of doing the um, sine cosine tangent, we use this law of sines. And again, the key with that is the angle has to be opposite the side. Okay, those are a little tricky. Sometimes the question is like the boat going up to it, um, the lighthouse, and um, and sometimes there's multiple ways that you can go about answering that question. All right, but many of them are made easier by understanding the law of sines. Big topic trig. Usually, 10% of the questions. Um, are related to trigonometry. So if you need to go back and watch parts of this, uh, please do so. All right, I'll see you back here soon.